All right, this is the first uh, episode of That Can't Be the End, and we're going to discuss movies that either have bad endings that are otherwise good movies, or movies that have vague endings. And um, have a guest today, Christian's here. Hello. And we're going to discuss a movie that, I guess, would you say you grew up on this movie? Yeah, it's it's been it's came out in nineteen ninety four, right? Yeah, I was thirteen when it came out. Okay, yeah. So it's one of those like yeah, like child like teen eighty movie that was around for a long time. And the movie's Pulp Fiction, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember my sister telling me that when she was fifteen, she watched up until the scene where he was uh, shooting up, and. Uh, she said she couldn't get past that scene, so I was like, oh, well, I'm going to watch this movie, and, you know, when I'm 15, or whenever, whenever I get my hands on it. shoot at And I was going to... This is when he's in the car? Yeah. And she couldn't watch that? No. <laughs> I was like, this makes me want to do drugs. He, he had such a smile on his face. Hey. He was good to go. <clears throat> the first thing I want to go over is, uh, what's in the briefcase? What do you think? I think it's Marcellus Wallace's soul. And I didn't uh, always think that. I didn't always think that. Okay, let me ask some you, of the right? Fan theories. Okay, you read some of the fan theories. And they made sense. Well, there are... It, listen, man, you can... Hey, name a cult leader that didn't make sense to some people, right? Yeah. You can convince anybody. Sometimes. Okay. But let me ask you this. What's the combination to the briefcase? 666. Six, six. Okay, so that's the only metaphysical weird... Thing in the whole movie. Nope, that we, more. Okay, let's talk about it. What is the first thing you see about Marcellus Wallace? His band aid on the back of his head. Yeah. And they say, uh, who now, says fans? Haitian, Haitian culture. Haitian fans. Well, if they've seen the movie and they're Haitian, I guess they're fans or whatever. I, from fans what I read, I want to say it's like Haiti lore. Or like Haiti culture says um, that if you're going to, the way to get through someone's soul is the back of their head. That that's the access point for someone's soul. And mm-hmm. another fan theory I read said that it actually has like biblical context too. Like the soul is mm-hmm. taken from the back of the head. So when you first see Marcel Wallace, he has a bandit over the back of his yes, head. This is true. And why else would the way you're introduced to him be a panning zoom from behind onto the band I'll tell you, Phil. Tell me. Because my man Ving Rames was shaving his giant brown head. Yeah. And he nicked himself in the back, put a band-aid on there. Yeah. Quentin saw it and liked it so much as part of the mystique of the character, he said, leave it in. Yeah. And you don't see anything, that's the only thing you see at first, right? We talked about that. Yeah. Purely a, a split second decision made by Quentin Tarantino. Okay. There was no thought put into it. That's how that band aid scene came about. Well, so the fan theory goes uh, when Vince and Jules go to get the briefcase, there's three guys. Yep. And they're supposed to be the three. Like helpers of the devil, they're supposed to be according to this fan theory. According to a fan theory I read on Reddit, said that they're supposed to symbolize three. Like the number three has something to do with like three assistants of the devil. It's it's supposed to be have like religious connotation, and when the guy comes out with the gun and shoots at them. The reason why there's the divine intervention of the bullets not killing them Mm -hmm. is because they're saving a soul. It has, like, the the way it was explained had, like, biblical roots. Okay. I can't speak. I don't know what he intended. They also, anytime someone opens the briefcase, they go on about how beautiful it is. And they say that the soul is the most beautiful thing about a person. But then you're just... You're just assuming that uh, what's what's Travolta's character name? Was Vince. Vince. Like when he opens it there and he goes, "Yeah, it's oh, it's here" or whatever he says, right? Like they just know that's a soul. Like they live in this universe where they could 
they can physically spot what a fucking soul looks like to them. Like this is what you. How many Halo bullets the, they've survived? Through. Did you notice there were bullet holes in the? Yes. In the, uh, but that I think that was just maybe a continuity error. No, uh, no. Tarantino did that on purpose. There what were do you bullet say? holes in the wall uh, at first. Um, Where did we leave off? I don't know. I had a small delay because I had to get something from the from outside front door. Uh, anyways, we were talking about um, Marcellus Wallace's right. soul in the briefcase. Right. So, one of the theories is what's in the briefcase was the diamonds from the diamond heist from Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. Well, you know the connection there, though. They say that... Um, There's many connections, actually. Uh, Let's take the first one. The first one's Vince yeah. and his brother. Yeah. What's, what's Mr. White? Is that, that Mr. White? Is that Chris Penn? No, Chris Chris Penn was his name was Mr. Nice Guy or some shit. Yeah, right. Man, he looked like shit in that movie. No, he didn't. He looked pretty good Com- compared to. What do you see his latest with Footloose? Well, I can't speak. I don't. I don't remember him in Footloose. I know he's in it, but there's later movies where you can see his deterior deterioration. He looked really good in Footloose. But I thought he looked good in, in Reservoir Dogs. To be honest with you, have you seen him sing? No. That motherfucker can sing his ass off. Well, the funny off. thing is, is it's only a couple of years. He did a Beatles cover with... With him. Oh. Oh, God damn it. Somebody pretty famous. Um, just type in Beatles cover Chris Penn. His name's Chris, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Amy Mann. Oh, that's who it is. Amy Mann. He's so... Yeah, they did a they did you know when uh, his brother was doing that movie I Am Sam, it was all Beatles covers. Yes, and Beatles related. He did a cover of Two of Us with Amy Mann, and that's the first time I heard him sing. But he's singing in other movies, like he sings like opera. He's really good. Uh, okay, it was so Footloose was eighty four, Reservoir Dogs was ninety two. Mm-hmm. But it looks like he aged 20 years and 8 years. He had a hard lifestyle, man. He was living that Belushi life. So he was doing a lot of drugs. Oh, yeah. Okay, I More didn't know More than that. Sean. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh. <sighs> Anyways. Um, like that Farley Belushi life. Okay. He looked like shit in Reservoir Dogs. I'm sorry. I, don't, I thought he, he was clean for that movie. He looked That's really why he looked good. good to me. He looked really In the tracksuit? Yeah. <laughs> He looked like someone that would own a tracksuit in that movie. He's such a good actor. He, he's one of those that nobody ever talks about. I feel like he's better than Sean, to be honest. I can't get on board with his, that. His, new, his, his uh, subtleties. You've got to see him in more stuff. There's a there's a, um, there's a a mob film. I forget what it's called. We'll have to look into it. But he, he's he got a part in that where he sings, and he's, he's really good. That's him in full. He loses his shit. Yeah, I get what you mean. He's thinner. He's, he looks like a fucking athlete. He looks like like a, like a teenager. See, I didn't know that was him growing up until yeah. much later. He, was, he doesn't he, look anything like how he looked in later films. Yeah, he looks like uh, Sean. Crazy. There's a specific picture I'm looking for, that one, where he's wearing the cowboy hat and uh, Kevin Bacon's teaching him to dance. I didn't even know that was him growing up. That's I so know. Weird. Yeah. Because he looks like shit the next time you for see him. For the podcast him. audience, we're looking at yeah. images from... 1984, Chris Penn. Uh, I listen to several podcasts where they do something with hand gestures, and they're like, ah, great for a fucking podcast. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so I think... They asked Samuel L. Jackson in the 90s what was in the briefcase, and he's like, whatever you want to be. That's Because that's coming from the, the source. That's uh, coming from Quentin. Quentin knows, because he wrote, everything he wrote, he had an, he had an intention first. Yeah. So he knew there was an original thing that was in the briefcase. But as he does, he chooses the better idea over what he had originally, he changes frequently throughout all of his scripts. Like, if it's a better idea, he'll go with that instead. So with the briefcase thing, he was like, it's better if you don't know yeah. what it is. And I get that. For for that time period. It's called period a of guffin? McGuffin. A McMuffin, right, yes. A McGuffin. Uh-huh. <laughs> I looked it up. I was reading about it. No, it's a McGuffin. 
Yeah, so it's a, it's a device used in films to, to carry the plot along. Or that to, does it, like, can be vague. Yeah. Um, and that leads me, well, okay, so the theory is they don't get hurt when they get shot. It would, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. So what did you like Norton in? Well, I, I had to pause the, the fucking podcast again because my wife was calling me about something. and The wife was uh, on the horn. <laughs> we got on the topic of, of actors and was talking about Edward Norton. I thought Edward Norton was fantastic and The Illusionist. Yeah, I really haven't seen that, to be it's honest. It's good. You. And he was fantastic in American History X, but American History X opened right. the door. For, for me watching him. The Illusionist was good, and you Fight Club was good. You can't front on American History X for sure. Fight Club is Did a you classic. see Rounders? Rounders is a great movie. Yeah. Um, and, and there's uh, Primal the Lawyer, Fear. Primal Fear is too good. So those are, that's a good... And then Leaves of Grass? Have you seen in the life, in the times of cholera? Yeah, I didn't really like that movie. I thought the movie was good. I thought his role was weird because he was an asshole at first. And he did just like 180, but I wouldn't pick that as his good movies. I don't know about The Hulk. I never really got into that when he was in it. Um, Grand Budapest Hotel, he was good in Red Dragon. He was good I hate in. that movie. I don't like Grand Budapest. Really? One of the Wes uh, Anderson movies I dislike. Wow. I saw it in a theater... And I, I'll have to see it again because I've met people who love it. No, I, I love it. I think it's great. Adam, where does it rank in, in the Wes Anderson film? Pretty high up for me. That's why I'm like blown um, away. I don't tell you what, it so ranks higher boring. than Darjeeling Limited. It's it's to you? Yes. See, I would rank that way higher than fucking Budapest. I do not like the Darjeeling Limited. I went back and rewatched what? it, and I was like, still don't like it. Why? It's so much more. What's, I don't even remember the plot in Budapest Hotel. It's boring as shit. I'll have to revisit it. I'm so yeah. curious well, why people like it. I also talked about Tarantino. I went and rewatched um, Inglorious Bastards, and I didn't like it. Wait, 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 wait. You don't like Inglorious Bastards? Really? It was too long. Dude. People with a Quentin Tarantino movie, yeah. you've got to strap in. Yeah. Uh, you liked the last one, right? That had lulls. Yeah. It, but there were that was reasons good. that you need, like... What's Plum Time in Hollywood? That was yeah. good. The Hateful Eight was okay. Yeah, I would rank that below Bastards, but I liked it. But I think Bastards is a great movie. Look, Christoph Waltz is good in Inglorious Bastards, but... It, it just takes a lot of chances that I kind of just got bored with. What well, kind of chances? Okay. Um, what you call this podcast? Like, <laughs> what's the word for when you veer off a topic? Uh, well, I always say my train of thought's been derailed. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I say. Um, no, it's uh, digressions with Phil. Yeah. Um, so my issue: Christoph Waltz is really, really good in that movie. But them machine gunning Hitler. That's the whole point of the movie. We, we, we revisionist. That I mean, that was one of the first films I've seen. I wanted that to does see. That, and I it, wanted to see more. It was more, glorious, dude. Uh, I wanted see more to see. What? Look, okay, the whole like teaser trailer. I want my Nazi scalps. I want to uh, see I don't, more. Wait, you're talking about the trailer now? I mean, glorious bastards. Yes. I can't speak to that. Sometimes the trailers are better than the movies. I'll give you that. But this, I is, thought, not the case. I this thought, is not the case, computer. Okay. Um, I thought it was going to be more centered around Nazi hunting. Like Nazi hunters. Sure, they did a bit of that, though. How much can you do? And when the when make uh, you know, the, the bear Jew the comes The bear along, Jew. That's all you need. I wanted, there were, there were supposed to be more scenes it revolved around that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know who the Bear Jew is related to and then the film history of the Quentin Tarantino universe? Oh, I've known this all the time. Who is it? I don't remember. Do you remember the lawyer in... Now, I'm sorry, sometimes because drugs, I forget titles and names of things, but this is a Christian... Christian a Slater movie with What's-Her-Face... Yeah, he didn't write... He didn't direct the film. True Romance. So, True ro ro Romance. Yeah. There's a lawyer... 
like no, a Hollywood producer, not a lawyer. They yeah. go to. His name is Mankiewicz. That's supposed to be the son of the Baron. That's Jones. right. Huh. Supposedly. Was was he the the producer that was screening the movie in the the hotel room? Mm-hmm. And, okay. He's the one who hopped up on coke. Yeah. You know? Who is hopped up on coke? Yeah, that's true. Like like licking some feet, smelling some coke. Fucking. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Uh, back to Pulp Fiction, there's lots of little things like that. Yeah. So, I like, and I mean, we also have, like, I like the the idea that there's a soul in that briefcase. I like to equate it to the band-aid in the back of the head. I like that there's a soul in it. You like it? I, I like that. I, well, that's I, I why he it, did it. He gives you that. Yeah. It's like a song, right? You don't want to yeah. tell. I was listening to Trent Reznor talk about this last night, how he doesn't like to reveal why because he he's had so many songs ruined for him yeah because they've explained what it's about one time i was hanging out with my friend skylar and we went and saw this band and we got to meet the lead singer because it was a it was a side band and then he's like my friend skylar was like oh i love this song you have uh uh it's about this isn't it and the guy goes is this the band off no we went and saw a band called Because I'm trying to think of what Skylar would like. I don't even know. Silent Civilian. We went and saw a band called Silent Civilian. Okay. That's a side band of a new metal band called Spine Shank. <laughs> what? There's a new metal band called Spine Shank. And they're actually really good. They were that like new metal slash industrial. They did a really heavy cover of While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Of course they did. They were they were similar to Orgy. Spine Shank? They were good. Shank it out there, shank it spines. I I thought that was a joke when you said it. No, uh, it's but he's in a band that's less new metal, more like regular, regular like cl- like classic metal. So Skyler says he was talking about Johnny Santos. He's like, you know, that's Scott. That's Shank. He he that's was like that's he was shank. like I really like the song Smothered. It's about this, isn't it? I think it was about like he, Skyler thought it was about censorship. Uh, and I think Johnny Santos went on a tangent about like that's not what that song's about at all. It's about <laughs> A, B, and C, and D. I would and then Skyler's like, whatever. It's about this. <laughs> like, he, yeah. I'm like, you're talking shit to the guy that wrote the song. Telling they kept him, telling Dave Grohl this was like back in the '90s when he was doing that Hero on Stern. Yeah, they kept telling him what it was about. He's like, uh, actually, it's about modern day here. I just like normal people. And they're like, no, it's about Kirkman. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's about Kirkman. Or it's about hating heroes. And he's like, um, that's not... At- okay, <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. And it's just like, people just have their ideas of shit. Another fan theory I read was... Was Mia Wallace trying to lure Vince into a trap? Was she trying to set him up? Was Marcellus Wallace using Mia as a uh, bait to trap Vince uh, to test his... Um, loyalty. No. I don't think so either. What's that based on? What theory is that based on? There's a fan theory that what Tony Rockahara the guy that got the guy that was rubbing her feet that got thrown oh, off yeah. a balcony. Um, basically that that was Marcellus Wallace was testing his men beneath right. him by uh Having Mia seduce them to maybe see maybe unbeknownst they, to Mia though to maybe, um, and when Vince is talking to her at Jackrabbit Slims about the issue, she gets mad. She doesn't right. want to talk about. It. She acts like she doesn't know what he's talking about, and right. then she doesn't want to talk about it. But also, she was an actress. But also, she was a bad actress. So then the question is. Was she acting when she didn't want to talk about it? Is was she, she a bad actress, angry? though? Because that's, that's one of the things in the movie. Well, one well, of the theories is that she didn't get her her uh, acting job. She got fired from it because she was a bad actress. However, in, the, Quint- actress. in the Quentin Tarantino universe, Kill Bill is a movie within a movie. I did read that fan theory. It's not a fan theory. It's really? from the horse's mouth, buddy. Well, I mean, this is Quentin. He doesn't go into too much detail about. I'm good, actually, on that. Thank you. Buddy. Um, but he does say that they are are related. Yeah, it's movies within movies. Yeah. 
So, one of the theories is Mia Wallace is testing uh, his men's loyalty for Marcel's laws. I don't think that's a true thing. I think that's just a strange fan theory because I, I, ju I just don't see There's it. There's a lot of evidence to support that. I think Marcellus Wallace is too caught up in his own ego sure. to risk his quote-unquote property, which is how she, she's a trophy wife. Also, he doesn't play games. He, he carries things out for you. Yeah. If you hear him talk about get the shit done, cool yeah. them ninjas out, all the talk like you hear from him is very like... Just get this shit done. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. He's not fucking around. So I don't. I just don't see him playing games with, you know, underlings just to see if they're loyal. I think he just says, I don't. He goes with his gut. And yeah. I, and he knows or he doesn't. Uh, I I don't like that fan theory that um, Mia Wallace is testing people for Marcel Wells. I think it's a bullshit. Fan yeah, and you, the way you just described how she handled it when they talked about it, she was annoyed. I don't think that leads one to believe the that theory. Is. The theory states, though, that if you watch her expressions, that like he he can read her emotions to know that oh well she doesn't want to talk about it, but then she gets like real frustrated. It's because her acting isn't fooling him. I don't see that. I think yeah. she doesn't want to talk about it because she wants to get away from. It her life for a minute like she wants to go out and dance yeah you know what i'm saying no and i agree. see her character she's dancing throughout the movie um she enjoys dancing she enjoys yeah music shit like that do you think that she really cares for marcellus wallace or do you think no. it's the lifestyle it's a lifestyle i think it's the lifestyle i do too and that's partially why she doesn't want to talk about it yeah um there's another theory that Pulp and the Pulp Fiction is a reference to toilet paper. And the theory is if people in the film that were in the bathroom took less time in the bathroom, the movie would be completely fucking different because of the interactions that would have happened. How many bathrooms? I know that there's a Vincent scene that's Vincent obviously. Vincent is always how in many? the fucking bathroom because of his heroin use. It's making him constipated. Uh, okay, but how many times do they show that besides that one time? Okay. He's in the bathroom uh, when Mia Wallace ODs on oh, yeah. his heroin. And if he took less time in the bathroom, uh, maybe. he could have been <laughs> like, that's not coke. He was also in the bathroom when Jules was trying to talk down the gunman in the diner scene. That's right. And he was also taking too long in the bathroom when uh, Bruce Willis shot him. Yeah, that's the only one I remembered, but you're right about the other one. So uh, there's a theory that there's a common thread with people taking too long in the bathroom, meaning uh, because of Vince's heroin use uh, affecting his digestive system, um, did he drop the ball on a lot of things? It, it did. It did end up in his death because he was supposed to be waiting in the apartment when. Uh, yeah, who takes a shit when you're trying to kill somebody? Yeah, when Bruce Willis comes back. I uh, mean, he leaves his fucking. Yeah, he leaves his gun out. But that leads me to another fan theory: um, Is Vincent a bad hitman? And then the other part of that is, well, uh, is, he, yes. is he a bad hitman because he's inept or because he's a heroin addict? All of the above. You look at his uh, interaction with Bruce, Bruce Willis' character yeah. in the uh, sequence. I forget what part. It's in the movie. But um, this is after they come back from the restaurant. And Bruce is there at the the club or whatever, and they yeah. come back in their weird clothes, right? Yeah. And he's like, "You, what are you looking at, friend?" And he's like, "I'm, I'm not looking at anything, Palooka, right?" And so he's got a he's got a fucking What's he's got a temper. Mean? It means uh, he takes up the butt. I don't know what that means. I, I'm just joking. Uh, Do you know what it means? No. It sounds like okay. His character is very like 50 centric, like Elvis kind of vibe right palooka 
sounds like some kind of southwestern slang for dude or something you know what i'm saying yeah or another variation of dude or some shit i don't know i was just kidding about the, the butt <clears throat> but um he's got a temper he's a drug addict what is Palooka slang for? An athlete, especially a boxer, oh. lacking an ability, experience, very specific. spirit, a stupid, clumsy person. So like okay. a meathead. Yeah, a very specific. He knew he, who he was apparently. Yeah, that that's interesting because I didn't know they knew each other. Who what they were? To yeah, Marcellus. Um, but one of the fan theories is that Marcellus Wallace. So one one of the people commented on the fan theory, well, him and Vincent go way back, Marcellus Wallace and Vincent go way back. Why is he trying to test Vince's loyalty now with Mia? And the the one of the responses that made a lot of sense was because he's been gone for three years and he's been in Amsterdam doing Amsterdam doing heroin. Mm-hmm. And he's so addicted when he comes back, he can't even leave his drug dealer's house without, you know, wanting to shoot up in the bathroom. Why would he leave her with him knowing he's an addict with with uh, maybe potentially her getting involved? Uh, you know, as far as taking the heroin. I, I don't know. Would he do it? It's, it's, risk that. it's interesting theory. Mm-hmm. Is is it like okay? I need to I need to test this guy now that he was away for three years and got in some. I'm torn dogs. here. I don't know if he is testing or not, but there's a good reason to. That's for sure. I don't think yeah. he doesn't know he's on. I think he does know he's on heroin. To be that kind of boss, he would know. Oh yeah. Um. So it, he he might be testing him, but I don't think he was testing the other guy. But there's not enough evidence well, to really they, either. A lot of the fan theories are the reason why Jules is with Vincent so much is that Jules is kind of his babysitter. Mm, yeah, I could see that. And one of the reasons of this podcast is to bring up theories and discuss why or why not they're a good theory or why mm-hmm. or why not they're bullshit. And yeah. there's some things that I even want to believe. Like, I'm going to talk about the movie Grease. And I like to think that at the end of the movie, they're dead. Because they drive up into the air in a car. <laughs> yeah, and no, so, it was a recent thing I watched. And I'll, I'll let you go ahead into the Grease thing, but there was something where it was like, it changed my whole perception of the movie in a bad way, where everyone's like dead or something. Like, I'll have to think about what it is. What, what's the Grease thing? Uh, we, I'll get on that on another okay. time. But, um, and I don't even like the full fan theory. I just like, you know, part of the fan theory. But mainly this, this podcast is just entertain fan theories, even if they're bullshit and silly and whatever. But, um, so was Vincent a bad hitman because of all of his drug use? Because the movie painted him to look like a badass hitman. But if you look and equate all of the fuck ups he did in that like short amount Shot of time. Mar- Marvin was the name? Yeah. Yeah. Shot Marvin in the face. Did you know that he was supposed to shoot Marvin twice and that they decided to go with the one time because it was funnier? So he was supposed to shoot Marvin once by accident and then Marvin was supposed to be like gasping for air and then he was supposed to shoot him again as a mercy killing. Like, fuck, he's, suff- he's suffering. No. He to shoot I, him. They, that was supposed yeah. to be what it was. And then they decided to just do it one time because it was funnier. Yeah. I oh and the guy that plays Marvin is Phil Lamar, mm-hmm. who's a voice actor. He was in Mad TV too. Yeah, so that's really interesting. Um, and then one of my and he last... wasn't there when they shot him. It was just a dummy. Uh yeah. They show the dummy in the in the backseat of the car later. One of my favorite uh, fan theories, one of the interesting fan theories, one of the ideas is where is um, Marcellus Walls going? When he's walking across that crosswalk. When he was getting fucking donuts or something? Donuts. And if you look, he has a dozen donuts and two cups of coffee. Right. It doesn't match with any of the Well, the other I know, but the fan theory is um, Vincent, or, you know, Travolta's character, was at the house. Marcellus Wallace got sick of waiting for Bruce Willis's character, so Marcellus Wallace was like, you hang tight. I'm going to go get donuts and coffee because he has a dozen donuts. He's a big man, but he had a dozen donuts and two cups of coffee. And so, 
he went, he was like, hey man, hold tight, I'm gonna go get, and then he runs into the boxer, Bruce Willis. I agree at with the this. Crosswalk. Is this a theory or is this actually? It's a theory. Oh yeah, I, I like this theory and I think it matches up pretty well with what's going on. Because it's, I and I never thought about it until I read the theory, so. I it, was wondering what the fuck, because it was so out of character. Yeah. But then it's just like he's going back with John Travolta to wait on the couch. He wants to make sure it gets done. Yeah. And I think that's why he's there. But I think that... I don't know if he was going to maybe entertain the idea of letting Bruce Willis live. I I don't know. I don't think that was the case until Zed. Well, yeah. But the question is... Why wouldn't he send Vincent alone? Why? Why? Why wouldn't? Well, the question is, is... If he just wanted him dead, he could have just sent Vincent alone. But I think he wanted to interact with Bruce Willis. Maybe he wanted to torture him. He probably wanted to say some badass shit to him while he's while he's getting shot. But then that puts him at the scene of the crime. He doesn't care. He doesn't need to. There's in his world, it doesn't seem like he he has much yeah to worry about as far as there's no talk of you know uh, you know police involved or anything yeah. or anything like that. As far as I'm aware of. And then uh, there's a fan theory that talks about how the Ezekiel passage that Samuel Jackson quotes is not at all fucking accurate. Can we look that up now? Yeah. First I have to find... I'm guessing it is. Why would they... And, And there's a fan theory that... In the Tarantino universe, it is, but not in oh. real life, because then we go into the Tarantino universe Bible, yeah. which is all based around striking down uh, bad men. And if you look at his movies, it's violent, but it's violent to strike down bad people. And so it's... Tarantino skews it all. I'm trying to think of the all the people that ever died in the Tarantino universe. And it doesn't exclude people killed by accident or because there are plenty. Yeah, he was some bystanders. Shit, when he runs over Marsalis when he has the donuts, Marsalis shoots at Bruce Willis's character and and shoots somebody a bystander in the leg or or arm or yeah. shit. Yeah. There are times Ezekiel of- twenty five seventeen. And it's not one of the in the universe, supposedly, it's not one of those movies that is a movie within a movie. So Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, they're both real life, quote unquote, in the universe. Movies like Django, movies like yeah, like Django, for example, would be a movie within a movie. Because yeah. that's supposedly played, and this is a new fan theory, played by Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Leonardo DiCaprio's character. That He's playing What's-His-Face Candy in Django. Have you heard that theory yet? No. Oh, it's a good theory. So, how does the famous movie monologue compare to the actual verse that inspired it? Uh, In Pulp Fiction, Jules says, The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who, in the name of charity and goodwill, shepherds the weak through the valley of the darkness. For he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of blessed children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know... I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. However, Ezekiel twenty five seventeen says, I will execute great vengeance on them with wrathful rebukes, and they will know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance on them. Um, it says Pulp Fiction took some liberties. So but, it's not verbatim. No, and basically they say the reason is, is because Jules is kind of just kind of like taking liberties and elaborating, but it's like he doesn't really know the book as well as he claims. It's it's kind of make him look boisterous. Yeah, and because he's taking all these signs in, uh-huh. but he's kind of like, he he's uh, reading into things more than I guess. But he also won't eat pork. 
Yeah. He says a sewer rat could taste like pumpkin pie, but I would never know because it's an unclean um, animal. So. Well, he's just one of those non pork eating bat motherfuckers, just like as well as this. Yeah. So. Fun fact whose wallet is that, actually? You know? Is it Tarantino's? Yes. This was actually his wallet he used. Fair enough. Okay. So, after talking about it, you still don't think his soul's in the briefcase? I do not. I think, I hate that theory, to be honest with you. I think it's rings so much into it. I think, I think it's, it's closer to Diamonds or some the actual thing that was the original intent, but when, once, once Tarantino realized, you can, you can, you can blow True. this up True. so but much why, more. Why does everyone go, oh, it's so beautiful? Or Diamonds really that beautiful? The whole no, no, no. That's up. why I, I think he realized... It's not as believable. Now the six 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 thing is the is interesting. I thought, could it be? People think okay, it could be something to do with Elvis. It could be something to do with some kind of metaphysical thing. The only thing I can think of is like the uh, the arc of the you know the the last what's the fucking thing the last cup or whatever the uh, arc of the cabinet. Yeah, that something along those lines maybe. But how would? Jules know what that means or how unless they were privy to knowing that which they might be the reason I like the theory is There's a briefcase and it's really important to him, but you want to elaborate why? It's um, supposed to change them too. It's supposed to once. Yeah, supposedly one of the theories is after they see it Yeah, and I don't I recall because, when Jules, because I will think sees it. I think people are so surprised that Marcellus Wallace has a beautiful soul, but all we see is him not having a soul, which makes him a bad I don't think fuck. he has a beautiful soul, though. Well, it says... There's no indication. The answer is I've read that everyone has a beautiful soul. Okay. <laughs> and that he sold his soul to the so devil. So why would I be surprised if he had a beautiful soul? How many souls have you seen? Maybe maybe that was the I... first tangible soul they've seen. Okay, this is why I like the theory. The whole Band-Aid thing... That, that's the significance of the bandit on the back of his head. But it wasn't meant to be a significant thing. I didn't know that until now. So that changes a little bit, but I still like theory. I know they're not dead. At but the that's the whole theories, reason he but... doesn't give an answer, because you can run with these theories. Yeah, and I, I like the theory. Um, uh, and then I also like that that's the reason that they don't die, was because they're doing the Lord's work of saving a soul. Yeah, but he does die. Yeah, but he's not saving a soul when he dies. He's working on behalf of the person who was trying the briefcase. Yeah, he's working on behalf of cranking one out. He's pooping. <laughs> uh, he's constipated from all this heroin use. Yeah. Okay, so what, what do you think's the briefcase? A light bulb? In a... <sighs> no, I don't know, man. It's, again... I was never interested in it. Okay. I, 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 that's why I'm like so surprised. There's so much fan theory regarding it because once I learned, you know, that word egg McMuffin, that that's what it is. And I, you, I get the reason. So you're okay with vagueness in movies, and you're okay with vague endings. I don't. Like yes, vagueness. and that, and th and this is one of the things we'll talk about with the thing. I love I love the way that ended, and I think there is uh, something that points to what actually happened, but there's enough evidence to support. Uh, an action, not like something that's not as vague as you might think. Yeah. With that particular movie, but I love that it ends that way. I love there's no sequel. Yeah. Prequel they could have done better, but I like the vagueness when it comes to certain films because I think with what movie? Well, we're t just a thing like as a yeah. Well, we might do that later, but yeah, I I didn't see the prequel to the thing. I heard it was awful. It wasn't awful. And just the, objectively, I think it's worth seeing. Yeah. But I don't because just because you're if you're a fan of that movie, yeah. you get to see how did the guy die when he's sitting in the that you think maybe yeah. he slit his or you don't know what happened to him. Yeah. I don't want to give it away, but yeah, there's, yeah. Oh, they show all that. They're very good with continuity. Okay, right on. Uh, you also agree that now when you look back on it, that Vincent is a bad hitman. I think yeah, he's he's he has a temper. You're right, and Jules. Ego, has, who's and... what's Sam? What's Sam's character? What's his name? Jules. Jules. Says, Jules has to calm him down a lot. Yeah. Um, so I think with, I think that's why Jules is set with him as a babysitter. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's probably true. And then uh, you don't think me as trying to lure Vince? No. Yeah. Um, do you think the bathroom theory is valid? That Paul, it's valid. 
because I don't know what what pulp I know what what it means to you as far as like pop culture referencing and yeah that, but I don't that mean that that's literally like fecal pulp people think is like no no like like paper pulp made in the toilet paper I think that's a far reach that's a reach around but I, I don't know but I think there's there's enough evidence to support that. They spend too much time in the fucking bathroom because... Vincent's always because, in the bathroom. Yeah, you're right. And he's reading a book every time he's in the bathroom. Is it a specific book? It is. Uh, and I actually wonder what it's about. I can look... See, I've up. never known this. I know there are... Does it make an appearance in other movies? Because, like, the, the, the cigarette brand... Uh, Red Apple. Red Apple makes an appearance in many... Uh, he has all of these philosophical discussions. Um, right. Modesty Blase. It's an action adventure spy fiction novel by Peter O'Donnell, published in 1965, featuring the character Modesty. It's either Modesty Blaze or Modesty Blase, B L A I S E, which O'Donnell created for a comic strip. So it's a, it's like a spy novel. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be more philosophy. Uh, well, there's tons of philosophical dialogue in the movie between him and Jules. Yeah. So there's that. But yeah, man, I don't... So, okay. Now, with Pulp Fiction, do you consider this one of those endings that's vague to you? What do you think about the sequencing? What do you think about the, the time? That was another one of my questions. Do you think the movie... Do you think a movie recut where it was all in order would be... I just saw that version. What's the question? Do you think it would be a better movie? No. But but I do recommend, if you can watch, like, from, like, the, the sequencing yeah. where it's supposed to be in order. Yeah. Because you get a better sense of, like, for example, the, the, the diner scene. When, at the beginning of the movie, you see that between mm -hmm. the two robbers, right? But while that's happening, Jules and Vincent are having their conversation, which is equally, if not more important to the arc of the story. Yeah. And they're having these conversations At simultaneously. The yeah. You wouldn't be able to see that if you didn't sequence it the way Tarantino did yeah. it, which I thought, it only occurred to me last night as I watched it in that order. That's fucking genius. And I always, I liked how we how he went back and it wasn't yeah. in order. I always thought that was a good move, but I never really understood why. Yeah. Now that just kind of puts it into perspective. You can do that when you yeah. sequence it that way. Yeah. And I'm like, that's fucking genius. Yeah. No, that's really interesting. And then wrapping up, um, talking about the theories has changed your opinion a little bit on the question of where was Marcellus going with the donuts and whitey app. That I never coffee. really thought about, that he would be there trying to kill... I mean, uh, a dozen donuts is a better I always thought deal. it was a funny thing they threw in there to, to yeah. throw you off. Yeah. But I think that has more, uh, yeah, like, validity. A dozen donuts is better. It's a better deal. If, if you're going <laughs> to want a couple of donuts, sometimes it's best just to go ahead and get a dozen. Him being a big man, I bet he would, you know, eat It's also donuts. the first time we see his face. Okay. I guess I and it's like he's that. getting donuts. He's this hardcore gangster, but he's going back with two cups of coffee. Now him wanting yes, and that's another thing. So then about. the question is him wanting you know it's definitely for his choice of donuts to maybe you know I don't know if that's relevant. His choice of donuts. I don't think the relevant when the, when I go to get donuts and your face changed, dude. So you went from when I go to get donuts, I can't choose. I can't go give me twelve plates. No, I go, oh, that one has Snickers bars on it? Give me one that has that on it. Give me... I like to have a good variety. So you think he... What's the reason for the 12? It's because he's a big man. He can't decide. At first, I was like, that's a big man. He's going to eat a lot of donuts. Right. But then seeing, why would he have two cups of coffee? That I never noticed until you brought it up just yeah. now. So I think there's plenty of evidence. The, I... I Never thought Marcellus would be there with Vince to kill what's his face. Yeah. But so. now that you mention it, that's exactly probably what was going on. Why would he even be close by? Cheers to you, my friend. Yeah. Huh?
Is that, I mean, is that known? I mean, it's probably known, right? It's fan theory. I mean... I think it's closer to a fact than a theory. Why else yeah. would he be there? Yeah. And then, I mean, is, is he even, like, a morning person? Because, I mean... Well, again, like... I thought initially when you see him walking across the street, it's for... To throw you off. It's for the plot progression or whatever. And it's just like, how would he be there? That's crazy. But he would be there yeah. if he was trying to... And then your question is... Why? What did he want to fuck with him? Did he want to say? Did he want to let him go? Did, or what was the reason that he was there? He, not? What what he could have done? To your point, he could was a shitty yeah, and on heroin, so he had to be there. One interesting thing that I was thinking about about the whole thing was like, uh, do you think it would have been an extortion thing where he t- you know told Bruce Willis, you know, I know you made money off this, give me that money. And, you know, that's a good point. That's a good point. How much did he make? Did he make bank bank? Probably more than what he would Eno- enough paid. to flee the country. Right. See, initially when I saw the movie, I thought he did it out of pride. But as you see, he gets on the phone and he's happy, so he got paid. Paid. Yeah. All right. That's well, a good point. That's our episode, and uh, that's it. We don't. We're not. There's no other like little uh, fun little things you could talk about with with Pulp Fiction. Meh. 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 <laughs> There's lots of things, dude. There's really? lots of little Easter eggs. There's the universe stuff. But, yeah, I mean... I mean, would, would, would you want to get into it with it? I don't know. There's, um... Okay, so, okay, let me ask you. Who do you think... Who do you think, uh... What Carby Kai tells character, and I forget the name they give him. The wolf? Yes. Who is he related to in the fan in the, in the, in the universe in the Tarantino? Universe? Oh, I've read that he's related to someone, but also I can't remember. He's literally related to the guy who looks exactly like him in um, the first movie. True romance. Mister, whatever color he was, Harvey Keitel's character in Reservoir Dogs. Okay. That's supposed to be his brother. Okay. And obviously the Vincent character, his brother is ear cutting off. I think he's Mr. White. I don't remember for sure. Yeah. Uh, but that's supposed to be his brother. They were supposed to make a film about uh, Vince, like a prequel with him and his brother, Mr. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, but because they got too old, they couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, that was something Tarantino wanted to do. Yeah. Do you think that he's going to make one more movie and then quit? Yeah, that's a good question. No, I don't. I don't know, man. He could. If he did, he'd be. That's some. That's a baller move, right? Because he can do a million other things. Movies are not as in high or highly regarded as series are now. So he could easily venture into series stuff or write things forever. People would be just as interested. But yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I read a fan theory that the thing that Jules says, uh, the, the Ezekiel passage, was actually something said in the beginning of a Sonny Chiba movie. Mm. And seen as in True Romance, which was written by Tarantino, yeah. they're at a Sonny Chiba film festival. That would I not have, surprise me. I have a film collection of like two or three Sonny Chiba movies. And oh, I don't know shit. if I've loaned it or if I've watched it. It's like a martial arts thing. Yeah. I want to sit down and watch it Definitely. just to, you know, because I love True Romance. Yeah. Um, Same. I mean, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, True Romance, those are all fantastic. But. Give me your Tarantino list. <sighs> <laughs> I couldn't do it offhand because I'll know I'll miss a movie or two. I believe I've seen them all, including the Grindhouse stuff. Uh, I will say... Which top? Let me look. I was surprised to hear your take on Glorious Bastards, to be honest with you. Um, that leads me to believe that your attention span might be a little... Uh, might be. But Pulp Fiction's not a fucking short movie. Yeah. What about the ending? We didn't really talk about the ending because I guess because the sequencing is different. It's not, uh, you know, linear. What about the, the exact ending? What happens right at the end? He goes, Zed's dead and they, they pull off. Is that it? 
I thought uh, the ending was Jules doing the diner stuff at the end. Oh, yeah, they go back to that. Okay. And right before that, it's Zed's dead, right? Um, oh, I don't know. Well, the only thing I know about the where Marcellus gets punked and they, uh, you know, they get the gimp and all that. I know the gimp was something that there's a backstory to the gimp that I know about. Apparently, the, he, the gimp was there like a year. They trapped him. He was a hitchhiker. Yeah. And the two, Zed and the other guy, they kept him there for a year and eventually trained him into being a gimp. <laughs> and um, So, I would say... Reservoir Dogs would probably be my favorite one. Number one, really. And then, do we count from dusk till dawn? Man, that's a good. He wrote the screenplay, right? I think so. I think you include the screenplays. I think you do have to make you have to asterisk them or put them in the separate categories because his directing is one thing. His directing and screenplays. Yeah. I also like Jackie Brown. That's probably my least favorite. And I know people who love Death Jackie Proof Brown. is my least favorite. I liked Death Proof. Uh, well, Planet, not, Planet Terror was way better, in my opinion. I don't agree. Oh, I enjoyed Planet Terror. It really has well. a lot of fun action, but I like the slow burn of Death Proof. And also, like, Kurt Russell. I don't know. I just like that. The revenge aspect of it, the, the feminism is kind of yeah. cool. I would say with me, it's probably, I'd probably do like a top three or a top four, and it'd probably be uh, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Django, hmm. and uh, I don't know. It's difficult. I think Pulp Fiction has to be in the top five. Yeah. I, we've all seen it so much, so it loses a lot of its, like, you know what I mean? Like, Django like, was really, really time. good, though. I, I think... Django is great, but... Uh, I can watch Django over, over the years. Over. That's true. Over. That's true. But it's, a, it's one of those that are the... And not everyone looks at it like this, but it's the movie within a movie part of the universe. Yeah, that yeah. I, when I think about it, I'm like, so okay... Hmm? So it's killed Right, it. which is, I think that should be up in the top five, even though I don't even like watch it as much as Django or yeah. when Pulp Fiction is on, I always have to kind of stop and watch it. It's a, That's a tough, it's a tough, uh, how many are there if you include the screenplays? I don't know. Like at least ten, right? Well, because they also reference uh, From Dust Till Dawn, uh, True Romance, um, Natural Born Killers, I guess it says he had something to do that. with. I don't know. I didn't like that movie. I couldn't get. I that. liked it, even as a kid when I didn't understand fully what was going on and the satire of everything. I knew it was ultra violent for a reason. Like it wasn't just like for gratuitous things. Yeah. Um, same thing with like Clockwork Orange and shit like that. But yeah, I get that. I, a lot of people don't like that movie. I think it's. It's better than what like a lot of people give it credit for. I like what it's trying to say, and maybe it did it inartfully. Robert Downey Robert Downey Jr.'s character in that is really good, I think. As the reporter slimy, like current affair, almost like uh um what's his name with the fucking mustache? In what movie? This is um Natural Born Killers. Okay, yeah. I don't remember that because I didn't get very far. <laughs> yeah, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, like, he's in he's throughout the movie. He plays this, like, tabloid reporter that's basically just trying to get the ratings. Yeah. And it's a really good character. All right, so, but yeah, you do like the fan theory about Marcellus Wallace with the donuts. And... Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably true. Yeah. 
The other ones, though, I find annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you didn't think about uh, Vince in, in the, the bathroom that much. Like, he's... Not really, no. He's running off to the bathroom When, a lot. when it com becomes this, like, metaphysical thing, like, yeah. or, like, that's where I'm kind of like, eh, it's, I like it more grounded, I think. Yeah. Right on. So, we'll, we'll call it quits mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm.